Should you get your fertility tested? What does it mean? What is AMH? What is ovarian reserve? Hey friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford and today I am talking about AMH or anti-mullerian hormone, what it means if you should get your fertility tested, what is ovarian reserve. I'm a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor and so this is something I talk about every day. I give the same analogies day in and day out. I am taking the counseling that I give to my patients every day in the office and bringing it to you. If you want to learn more about your body or your fertility, subscribe to the channel and help me spread my message of fertility awareness and body awareness so that we can be empowered to make the decisions that are right for us. Fertility is not guaranteed and it's something that we don't talk about enough. And so today I am breaking down the basics. When someone comes in and they want a fertility check or a fertility evaluation, really what they're asking for most of the time is to check their ovarian reserve, specifically their AMH. And if you see somewhere that says free fertility testing here, come get your fertility test, it's most likely a blood draw for AMH. That is one piece of the puzzle. It is easily checked at different times, but it's important to understand what it means. I'm a huge fan of supporting what our society say for guidelines, but I've got to admit that as a fertility doctor, the American College of OBGYN or ACOG has a guideline saying that this should not be checked in women who are not experiencing infertility. That's not my favorite recommendation because it is population specific and every day I deal with people who wish they had known this information earlier. So it is my strong belief and most fertility doctors that if you desire to understand this, as long as somebody is explaining it to you well, that is your right and you might act differently based on the information you're getting. AMH stands for anti-mullerian hormone. It is one of my favorite blood tests and we talk about it all the time, but this is a person to person measure and that understanding the implications of it is really huge. So my favorite analogy, the vault. Imagine that inside your ovary, there is a vault where all your eggs are kept. When you're born, the vault is full and throughout the course of your life, eggs come out of the vault and when the vault is empty, you're in menopause. This is representing your reproductive lifespan. Now, when the vault is full, more eggs come out every month. And when the vault is empty, fewer eggs come out every month. So interestingly, you have a group of eggs come out of the vault every month. Each egg grows inside a follicle, which is a small fluid-filled structure that you can see on ultrasound. The brain sends out follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. FSH is a well-named hormone that works to stimulate one follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen, you ovulate the one, and whatever else was released from the vault dies. Next month, a new group. So this process is happening over and over throughout our reproductive lifespan. And it is important to us to understand this because sometimes what happens is that women are in the end of their reproductive lifespan without being aware. And they're waiting to start their family because they're not ready, because they're chasing other goals and dreams. Meanwhile, when they do become ready, sometimes the window has closed or it is a much more difficult journey. So understanding how you are on this pathway may help you try to understand if your goals how many kits you want and when you want to have them makes sense for what your body is doing. This is super important because as a goals-oriented person who's achieving big things and rocking your career, when have you ever let one big goal, like become a mom, not matter anymore? And that's really what we've been doing with our fertility over and over again. So AMH, anti-malarian hormone, is made from all the cells surrounding the follicles outside the vault. To put it simply, more follicles in the vault, more come out every month, higher AMH. Fewer follicles in the vault, fewer come out every month, lower AMH. So AMH is a surrogate marker of how many eggs are coming in and out of the vault. So that is helpful to us to understand where you are in your ovarian reserve. Think of ovarian reserve as how many eggs are left inside the vault. Also important is that AMH in our brains, I know we love math and we love things to be linear. You start with the most you're ever going to have and the line's just going to go down. But in reality, month to month, there are variations. So this number can vary by up to 30% per month. That is important because let's just think about it. If I tell you based on your age, I would estimate to have about 20 eggs come out of the vault per month. Okay. So that's what I'm estimating. Is your body going to send out 
20, 20, 20. No, if you're going to have 20, 16, 24, 22, 18, right? You're going to have month to month variation. And depending on which month we check it, when you have 16 eggs or 24 eggs, you're going to get a different discrete numerical value. So you will see AMH hop like this. If you went to every fertility clinic in the country and got it checked, you would see it move around and it would be very frustrating. But if we stepped back and we looked over the course of your life, we would see that number drop over time. And so that drop, that slope of the line is truly important. Put it aside, I'm going to talk about some specifics on AMH that you need to know. It's not the only way to evaluate your fertility. I really think an AMH is best paired together with a vaginal ultrasound so that we can look at an antral follicle count or an AFC. An AFC is truly counting those small follicles that are out of the vault. That way we can make sure that these two things are corresponding. I like to think of AMH in categories, normal, above average, below average, critically low. So we're trying to see if both these values are putting you in the same category, or if they're discordant, we're worried that you're starting to go down a little sooner than we had hoped. There are other measures of fertility that might make a difference to you. So if your fallopian tubes are blocked, let's say you have a suspicion for endometriosis because you have very painful periods, or if you've had a prior chlamydia infection, you might now know that you're not gonna get pregnant without IVF, meaning taking the eggs out of your body. And your AMH value, or how many eggs you have, and the age you are at which they come out of your body, is going to make a huge difference in your success rate per cycle. So for example, if you're 30 and you come to me for a fertility evaluation and you're not ready to get pregnant, but we find out that your tubes are blocked, you still are the youngest you're ever gonna be, so your eggs are gonna be the best quality, and you have more of them than you're ever gonna have later. And so by getting those eggs out of your body now and freezing them, I am doing you the best service I can because whenever you wanna go use them, they're gonna to have to be fertilized in a lab because your tubes don't work. And then that embryo is gonna be put in your body. So some women, if they're on the fence about should they freeze their eggs, really want that extra piece of the puzzle, which is a tubal evaluation. So pushing liquid through the fallopian tubes and watching with imaging to see if they are open, that way we can make sure that if you know IVF is gonna be it for you, that we intervene now. Similarly, if you're with your life partner, you're just not ready to get pregnant yet, a semen analysis is super helpful. Some men do not have sperm. Some men have very low sperm counts. Sometimes there is no warning sign for this. So if I see a couple who just says, hey, we're getting married, but we're getting older, but we're not ready to get pregnant yet, should we do anything about this? We're going to check ovarian reserve, AMH, antral follicle count, Plus, we are going to check tubal evaluation and we're going to check a semen analysis because if any of these factors are telling us that we're going to need IVF, no doubt that IVF is better by getting eggs out of your body now than in the future, 100%. Back to AMH. AMH does fluctuate, as we said, and it does not impact natural fertility. So this is confusing for everybody because I'll have a patient come in who had a fertility check somewhere, her AMH was low, and then she says, well, this must be the cause of my infertility. And that would make sense, but truly it's not. So let's think about it. If you and your friend are the exact same age and you have a low AMH and she has a normal AMH, how many eggs are you ovulating per month? One, you're both ovulating one egg. You both have the same probability that that egg will get fertilized. What is differing based on your ovarian reserve is how many eggs are outside the vault. So she may lose 19 eggs and you may lose five eggs, but that's just representing you have less time to get this done, but that still means you're ovulating one egg per month so you still have your age-related chance. Really great study showed this. AMH is not associated with natural fertility or fecundability, probability of getting pregnant per month. Does not mean that AMH is not important because that information on natural pregnancy is thinking about the right now and baby one. What about if you're just starting your family? What about if you're not ready to start your family? AMH is then very important. AMH has also been clearly associated with number of eggs that you get at egg retrieval. So if we are doing egg freezing or in vitro, we are taking your eggs out of your body. What we're really doing is taking those eggs that have been released from the vault. So those eggs are destined to die or to ovulate. We are just getting more of them to grow and taking them out of your body. We are not impacting your total egg count. So a common question is, if I freeze my eggs, well, then won't I run out of eggs faster? No, we are just preventing some of the eggs that would have died 
from dying and we're getting them to grow that month. AMH can also be suppressed by birth control pills. And so what we are seeing is that chronic birth control pill use, even though I love the pill and use it for many, many reasons, a short-term use is not a big deal. But chronic use, when you've been on it for a long time, may actually tell your vault to release fewer eggs per month. And so we may see a lower AMH if you go for a fertility check on birth control pills. And if you come off the pill, we may see it revert back to what your normal is. In studies, it looks like after about three months of being off the pill, your AMH returns to kind of what your baseline should be. And birth control pills have not been associated with a drop in your egg count or reduced fertility. So this is just a transient sleepiness of the birth control pill, mostly because they work by telling the brain not to send out FSH so the ovaries are not stimulated at all. And when they've not been stimulated for a prolonged period of time, they go into sleep mode. That's what I think about it. We also have new studies showing that AMH is lower in women who carry the BRCA mutation. And so talking to you about fertility preservation is extra important. We see AMH lower in women who got endometriosis, especially when it impacts inside the ovary and you have endometriomas. And so if you have a history of endometriosis, getting a fertility evaluation sooner is important. We see AMH lower in women who've had chemotherapy in the past. So if you had a cancer in your childhood, adolescence, or early adulthood years, you still want to have a family and you did not go through fertility preservation ahead of time, that's okay, but you should come see us now. We often still intervene to try to get eggs or make embryos in these patients because we anticipate that they're going to go into menopause early. There is emerging evidence that even young women with a low AMH may have a decrease in their egg quality. We are not sure if this is because of whatever caused their AMH to be lower, can environmental chemicals, smoking cigarettes, marijuana, some of those things we are starting to have increased research showing us they may be harmful to our bodies. Does that impact quality as well as quantity? So if you find out you have a low AMH and you're younger and you want multiple children, preserving some eggs or embryos for the future is the smartest, most conservative option. Anytime I talk about AMH, there's always somebody who is upset because not everybody can afford intervening, egg freezing or IVF. And I completely understand that. I wish every day that I didn't have to talk about finances or how expensive these processes were with people because I want everybody to be able to have a family that they want. People who have a lower AMH might get this information and choose to not pursue anything. And that's okay too. There is still power in being the person to make that choice, accepting at an earlier age that you may not become a parent. You may only have one child. You may use donor eggs or embryos. You may adopt and becoming comfortable with those situations earlier on is helpful than struggling because you are never given the choice. And similarly, some people are able to find ways, whether it's getting a job that does have fertility benefits, applying for grants, looking at programs that can help them. And so even though, yes, the treatment for this can be expensive, it is still a choice to be made. And if this is a goal that's hugely important for you, at least be the one to look it in the face and say, I can't do this, but I'm going to be okay and start to explore and learn about these other options because there are so many paths to parenthood that are beautiful. Genetics are not what makes a family. The end. I'm a huge fan of checking your fertility. Studies would show us that if you're interested in freezing your eggs, that the best time to do so is going to be around age 32 to 33 if you're not ready to start trying to get pregnant at that time. Of course, that's population-based studies, so what may be appropriate for you? You're never going to be wrong to say the moment you should freeze your eggs is the moment you are thinking about it. If you're curious about your fertility, get it checked. You can usually call the fertility doctor and come see us, get a fertility evaluation, learn about your options so that we can help you have the most options for the future. As always, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel so we can learn more about our bodies. You can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or check out the podcast as a woman for in-depth fertility related topic review. Thanks friends.